What is going on, YouTube friends? Welcome to the channel. My name is Farid, and boy, oh boy, do we have some announcements coming to Cardano. If you guys have not been paying attention, Scott Fest is currently ongoing in Scotland right now, and we actually just heard from Charles Hoskinson and some other key representatives from IOG. Now, as a part of today's video, I want to break down three key announcements. The first is going to be around the USDA stablecoin, which was announced by Emergo. Following that, I want to talk about Midnight, which is going to be Cardano's new privacy sidechain. And then at the end of today's video, I want to talk about an investment at the University of Edinburgh, which was just made by IOG. And so let's go ahead and just jump straight into the first announcement, which is around the USDA stablecoin. If it's your first time hearing about Emergo, they're going to be the commercial arm to the Cardano blockchain and they're going to be collaborating with IOG as well as the Cardano Foundation to bring Cardano to the masses. Now in this article here, it clearly reads Emergo has officially launched their first USD backed stablecoin for the Cardano ecosystem. And so this is going to be in addition to Jed, Mihan, IUSD and so many more um, stable coins that are currently getting ready to launch on the blockchain. And so starting from the very top here, Emergo, the official commercial arm and a founding entity of the Cardano blockchain, announces the planned launch of its new US dollar backed stablecoin, USDA. Now, USDA is going to be the first fully fiat backed regulatory compliant stablecoin in the Cardano ecosystem. This is going to be fueled by Cardano and it's going to be designed to safeguard Web3 companies and consumers from crypto market volatility and USDA leverages the stability of the US dollar combined with Cardano security, low fees and its eco-friendly blockchain. And so, as I mentioned before, this is going to give an opportunity for investors within the Cardano ecosystem, a small safe haven to where they can move their assets to um, in order to not be impacted by the fluctuations of the everyday crypto market. Now, this new stablecoin offering locks in the value of investors crypto assets by pegging them one to one to the US dollar, reducing volatility and unlocking fast global transactions without legacy banking and payment infrastructure delays. As the article continues to read, Emergo has also partnered with a regulated financial services company based in the United States to custody cash deposits, assuring the stablecoin is fully compliant and adheres to regulatory guidelines. Now, this is huge here, especially with the um, issues that just happened with the Terra Luna ecosystem. Back to USDA, which is going to be backed by real world assets, USDA will provide a strong long term price stability that may eventually lead to unlocking more reliable financial services to the Cardano ecosystem. And so it looks like this is just the beginning in regards to stable coins and new additions to the DeFi ecosystem within Cardano. Now, USDA is the first product being brought to market within Anzins, Emergo's new product suite, which aims to bridge the gap between traditional finance or TradFi and DeFi, which is decentralized finance. Now, Anzins will provide a portal to regulated financial service products offered within Cardano's ecosystem, wherein anyone can tokenize their dollars and move them as a Cardano native asset. And so again, it's going to be simplifying the process of getting access to the Cardano ecosystem for players that have been sitting on the sideline up until now. Now, the very last article I'm going to highlight here is that USDA is planned to launch on the Anzins platform in Q1 of 2023, where users will be able to tokenize their USD into USDA via credit and debit cards. In addition to that, wire transfer, ACH or conversion of ADA. Alongside the tokenization of USD, Emergo will soon enable the safe and convenient conversion of other stablecoins, including USDC, USDT to USDA, with further plans to enable conversion and swaps of cryptocurrencies such as BTC, Ethereum, amongst others. 
Guys, I cannot exclaim how big of an update this is for the Cardano ecosystem. Just breaking this last paragraph down a little bit further, you know, the ability to basically transfer your, your regular fiat or your US dollars into USDA via credit and debit card is going to be super simple. I know that that's something that a lot of people are currently familiar with, especially with um, traditional fiat onboarding ramps like Coinbase, where you have to basically use one of those methods, i.e. your credit card or your debit card. On top of that, the um, Anzen suite will also be providing people the ability to swap their USDC and their USDT, which are arguably the top two right now um, most used and probably uh, most common stable coins over into USDA. So we could potentially see some of the market share from the top two stable coins slowly leak over into the Cardano ecosystem. So this is great for TVL and overall for the DeFi ecosystem, which is just about to boom within Cardano. Now, the very last thing here that the article mentions is also the ability to potentially convert regular cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin, Ethereum, and others into USDA. So hopefully you guys understand the impacts of this particular update. Um, it's really good news, and I'm excited to see that this is going to be coming to Cardano in early Q1 of 2023. Next, I want to move over and talk about Midnight, which is going to be a brand new uh, privacy sidechain that was just announced by Charles Hoskinson earlier this morning at ScottFest, which is taking place in Scotland. Now, ScottFest is going to be an event kicking off the transition into the Voltaire era, which is going to be a governance era and one of the final development core stages for the Cardano blockchain. So let me jump back over into my um, screen share here and we're going to be taking a look at midnight.iohk.io. This web page was just released earlier, as I mentioned, and what I want to do here is quickly highlight the website and then I want to jump over into the actual video, which was broadcasted live by IOG when Charles made the announcement for this new sidechain. So what exactly is Midnight? Midnight is going to be a data protected based blockchain that safeguards sensitive commercial and personal data while protecting fundamental freedoms of association, commerce, and expression for developers, companies, and individuals. So it's not just going to be an enterprise-based blockchain, but it's going to be a blockchain that will also benefit everyday users like yourself and I. Now, in addition to that, Midnight will enable developers to quickly build and deploy data protection first dApps using many programming languages, starting with TypeScript, while companies will be able to share mission critical information about the fear of leaks, or excuse me, without the fear of leaks or censorship. Individuals will be able to safely share their sensitive information when operating in a connected world. Now, one thing here that stuck out to me here is going to be the support for many programming languages, starting off with TypeScript. Lately, we've seen a lot of feedback, especially from within the developer community, as to the level of expertise and the difficulty that it takes to learn Haskell, which is the core programming language for the Cardano blockchain. And so starting off with something that's a little bit more digestible, such as TypeScript, I think is a really, really good start here. And we could hopefully start to see adoption of other regularly adopted um, programming languages that can be used to build on top of the midnight sidechain. Now, I want to quickly jump over into this video here, which was Charles Hoskinson, who is actually the CEO of IOHK, which is Input Output Global, who's building Cardano, uh, announcing the release of Midnight. So this is going to be about a three and a half or four minute video. I'm going to go ahead and play this for you guys, and then we're going to wrap up by reviewing the last announcement for today's video. And one of the reasons why a lot of people sign up for cryptocurrencies is they mistakenly believe that cryptocurrencies have this capability. They mistakenly believe that cryptocurrencies will give them privacy and freedom of expression, association, and commerce. I did an interview this morning with a news agency, and we showed off Symphony of Blockchain. One of the magical things about that experience is we were able to start from January 3rd, 2009, and visually walk through every transaction that ever happened in Bitcoin's history. That doesn't really sound like you have a lot of transactional privacy there, right? If I can build a VR experience to do that, anyone else can. 
So we constructed Midnight to basically bring this back, but we wanted to go above and beyond just privacy. We wanted to explore new boundaries and concepts, confidentiality. So this idea that it's private to the public, but you can do voluntary or involuntary disclosures depending upon the business domain. So regulated activities are great examples of that. The Bank Secrecy Act, your bank can't go and tell your neighbor, well, this is how much money Jer has, and this is what he spends his money on. That would be a crime in almost every regulated jurisdiction. Okay, so he enjoys confidentiality. But if he gets subpoenaed, the bank can reveal certain information. So what's cool about the concept is it's really interesting to talk on a protocol level, a cryptocurrency level, how do you do that? How do you link identity and privacy in the right way where you can ensure and preserve the rights of the minorities, of individuals, pre preserve people against dystopian governments, but at the same time be able to not deal with the dark sides of privacy? And this is what we've been working on and thinking about for so long with Midnight. Another thing is all privacy coins right now, all they really do is they keep the transaction private, the token private, the coin private. It's useful, but it's 2022, which means you have to have smart contracts. You have to have programmability. So how do you have a private smart contract? It's a very interesting question. And actually, there's people in this room who wrote a beautiful paper called Kachina that tries to answer that question. And there's people in this room who took some time to actually implement that paper and create their own virtual machine. And they use TypeScript as the programming language. Go figure. Compile and run it. Wow. So that's what we've been working on. And it's been a hell of a long road, four long years of deep R&D. Lots of team members, tons of papers. We published all of them. None of you paid any attention to them. It's really easy to keep a secret when you hide it in math. It's like, it's like an alien language. You're just like, here you go. It's like, eh, OK, whatever. So right now, we're taking a look at DNA from Scorex, which is a project that we had a very long time ago with Alex Chirpinoy and Fabric. And we're taking that midnight virtual machine, and we're going to launch it as a side chain of Cardano. And by were, it means you are, because that's how side chains are launched. And this is not just me talking. We actually have a demo tomorrow, a hackathon tomorrow, where people can actually play around with the midnight virtual machine. People can write the code. They can actually see what a privacy application looks like. There's a lot of real cool stuff there. And what's really interesting about the way side chains and Cardano work is that it's a partnership. It's magical in that respect. So this is a new blockchain. What does it need? It needs decentralization. It needs security. It needs infrastructure. It needs liquidity. It needs an ecosystem. Every new blockchain needs that. Cardano actually has it. It's on 200 exchanges. There's over 20 wallets that support Cardano. We have millions of people floating around doing interesting things. We have an incredible ecosystem filled with all these great developers and academics and wonderful people. So it'd be real cool if Cardano could give that to Midnight. But what's Midnight going to give back to Cardano? For? Because partnerships are partnerships. Well, if Midnight's got a token, in this case, we call it dust. Then what happens is as the stateful operators maintain the Midnight Ledger with those high performance, high throughput protocols, what they're going to do is they pay rewards back to the stake pool operators and the ADA holders. So at some point when Midnight launches, you get dust and ADA instead of just ADA. See? So everybody in Cardano land benefits from that partnership. Suddenly, we're not as adversarial as we used to be, right? Now we're looking for every fucking partnership we can find. We're like, come to Cardano. Come on, Polkadot. It was a good run. Come on over. Come on on to Cardano. There's a lot of great stuff you can do. And, and we'll take care of your blockchain for you. Real nice. It'll be great. We'll give you wallets, and oh, you can be Cardano native asset, and oh, we made a room up for you. It's, it's just so beautiful. And we'll get some of those stake rewards. You see? That's how we should be thinking when we think about cooperation and interoperability. And this is the dream of four years of hard work. And there are going to be some great presentations tomorrow about ACE. And we're going to, we have a lot of cool stuff. I think there might even be a website at some point up. If not today, then soon. And there's all kinds of great stuff that's floating out here. And you guys are just going to be blown away by the amount of progress that we've been able to do. But the magic and power. Wow. So this is just a brief snippet of some of the information that, again, was being shared today live at ScottFest in Scotland. So if you guys have not already gotten a chance to follow up um, and watch these live streams, I'm going to be leaving the link to this particular video um, as well as the link to the Input Output Global YouTube channel. And I recommend that you guys tune in for all of these breaking updates around the blockchain. So again, in summary here, Midnight is going to be a brand new data driven or excuse me, data privacy driven blockchain coming to Cardano. And we can also expect to see um, the dust token used as a um, governance token for that blockchain. Now, outside of that, again, it's going to be running on side of the Cardano blockchain. And as Charles mentioned in that video, we could potentially see stake pool operators right now. Um, who are securing the Cardano blockchain 
get rewards by also securing the Midnight blockchain. So a huge opportunity coming to Cardano um, in regards to this. And if you guys actually want more information about Midnight, let me share my screen again with you guys. You can navigate to this website here and you can actually click on this sign up button here, provide your email address, and they'll email you guys with the latest developments surrounding this new sidechain. Now, the last development that I wanna highlight for today's video is going to be a brand new um, investment that was just made by IOG, again, which is the company run by Charles Hoskinson directly to the University of Edinburgh, which is where Scott Fest is currently taking place. So um, today, actually, when Scott Fest began, we saw presentations from staff members directly at the university, in addition to some key representatives from IOG. And so this is basically breaking down a key contribution that IOG made over into the University of Edinburgh, specifically their computer science department and their department for information science. So starting at the very top, Input Output Global or IOG, the main developers behind the blockchain Cardano has announced today that it has funded a $4.5 million research hub at the University of Edinburgh to fund new research projects aimed at accelerating the development of the blockchain technology. The donation forms part of IOG's extensive academic program designed to foster continued research to set industry standards and best practices for emerging technologies. Now, the hub itself will allow university students and researchers to propose new projects for the technology, driving greater industry-wide focus on fundamental research and allowing researchers who work outside of the technology to explore its capabilities more easily. It will also be led by a steering committee featuring both IOG and university representatives, which will review project proposals and allocate their funding. So not only is IOG making the direct donation, but they're also going to be sticking around to review some of the projects that the funding is going towards to make sure that it aligns with the Karano um, vision and the Karano community, and that it's also making the um, adoption of blockchain a lot easier for outsiders looking to get into the crypto or the blockchain space. The article continues to read that this round of funding follows the successful funding and launch of the Blockchain Research Hub at Stanford University, which was made in August of this year, as well as the donation of $20 million by IOG's CEO, Charles Hoskinson, directly to establish the Hoskinson Center for Formal Mathematics at Carnegie Mellon University in Pennsylvania. Now, I am not a mathematics guru, but I do know that this is a very prestigious um, university. And so to have Charles make a personal donation of $20 million really speaks to his character and his vision when it comes to Cardano. Now, proposals submitted to the hub will include elements related to IOG's products and systems, again, making sure that everything that um, this funding is going towards does align with Cardano, allowing the businesses to continue its strong focus on academic rigor and formal methods, which are applied to all of its products. And so again, here, just another huge update within Cardano. Um, and that's really going to wrap it up for today's video. So we highlighted the USDA stablecoin coming to Cardano in Q1 of 2023, being launched by Anzins in collaboration with Emergo. We also highlighted the Midnight Privacy sidechain coming to Cardano. And again, if you guys are interested in staying up to date about this blockchain, make sure to sign up using the official link to their website. And then we wrapped up today's video by highlighting a $4.5 million donation made by IOG to the University of Edinburgh in efforts of pushing uh, crypto adoption into the masses. Again, if you guys enjoy this type of content, then please make sure to tap that like button. If it's your first time visiting the channel, consider subscribing. And if you have any questions or comments about any of the content covered as a part of today's video, then make sure to leave a comment down below. With that said, I will see you guys in the next video.